What is going on, dudes, lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, um, I'm doing a new video. I'm trying. I'm thinking about starting this, making this a new series, and this will be the first episode here. Just trying it out. This may not be a super crazy popular one because the card we're talking about is kind of specific that a lot of people I don't think know about. But the series I want to, I'm thinking about starting is one where we look at um, a really, really good card that just happens to be in a really, really bad archetype, uh, or an archetype that just doesn't really let that card flourish the way it could if it were in a better archetype, a more, um, you know, prosperous archetype. So, um, I know this is a weird one, but <laughs> whatever. We're starting with Emergeroid Call. Uh, call. This is a uh, counter trap card. And if you don't know what it does, we'll start by reading it so we can get an idea for wh how good it is. Um, it's counter trap, where it's which reads: When a spell, trap, or monster car, uh, monster effect is activated while you control a Roid Fusion monster, negate the activation. Then send all cards with the same name as that card from the activating player's deck and extra deck to the graveyard. Now it also has a second effect, where you can banish this card from your graveyard to target one Roid monster in your graveyard as cost, and add that back to your hand. So obviously this, is, obviously this card does everything. I mean, it's like one of the, it's just a straight up Omni negate any spell, trap, or monster. It doesn't negate a summon, but that's a little too good. Um, but not only does it negate it, but then it sends everything from that player with that same name that you negated from the deck, main deck or extra deck to the graveyard um, all at the same time. I mean, when you really just think about the grand scope of what that could mean, it's kind of crazy. I mean, just negating and destroying something could be that could be insane. Um, uh, so, like, I'm talking about. You're you're looking. You're playing Sky Strikers. They activate engage. You negate and engage, but also send two more engages from the deck to the graveyard. If you can keep them off of multi roll and Kagari, you just won the duel. Like you really did, um, pretty much. Um, maybe if you're maybe if you just out uh, one of their monsters and they bring Ray back and you negate Ray and. Um, negate Ray's effect after it tributes itself, uh, then you send the other two copies of Ray to the graveyard, they're locked out of Ray, and if they cannot get to Hornet Drones, they just straight up lose. Kind of same thing with like Shizuku, if the Shizuku activates effect, you negate and destroy, they could get Ray back, but Shizuku's gone, and now they can't grind with Shizuku like they normally would. They have the one Kagari, and then other than that, they have to make use of Hayate to really get where they want to go. Um, really, really eliminating them. So there's a ton of stuff just like that. Um, really good applications and just any deck that runs like that um just negating and sending stuff send the other copies to graveyard to really limit what they can do in further in in further points in the duel and then the other part just literally and that's not even you can activate this the first effect and the second effect in the same turn you can just banish to add a card back um that could be an extender that could just be a follow-up play for next turn there are you know depending on the archetype there could be some things here just a really insane card i don't think i really have to go too in depth on how good this card can be just in, against anything i mean any deck just the omni gate is powerful but sending the rest and then also getting you a resource back is just so so good this card's insane but unfortunately just like the series suggests this is a roid card and roids are terrible they don't have any good cards like really um, they have a couple like okay cards that are kind of interesting, but they're really nowhere near enough. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about today because this card is very similar, um, sort of, to like some things we've seen uh, in very recent Yu Gi Oh! that's like been very prominent, which is like stuff like Salamangrate Roar. This is a nominee in the gate for Salamangrates, um, which um, also lets itself uh, set itself back to the field if your opponent, or if you use, do a. Um, what is it called? Reincarnation Link Summon. So this is a card that just omnigates and then gets itself back. Not too shabby, but a very searchable card in the archetype. Same thing with Orcus Crescendo. Um, the added bonus for this card is that when it negates something, it banishes the card, and then you can also banish this from your graveyard to add um, one of your Dark Machines that's banished during the deck to your hand, so that's a really nice follow-up play. Uh, but it does also have the minus effect of locking you into Dark Machine Monsters the turn you use this. So... You know, there's there's pros and cons. Um, I think Crescendo is probably generally better than Roar, but I think Emergeroid Call is probably better than the both of them. You can activate its effect in the same turn. It doesn't have any actual like contingencies that lock you into machines or anything. It's just so generically good. But one thing I want to do here is I want to look at what it, what would happen if you put this card in an actual like solid archetype, right? Where do you go? 
Oh, oh, I'm missing something. What's happening? Oh, there we go. All right, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We here. We here. Don't worry. Don't worry. What happens when you put Roy, a Mergeroid call into an archetype like Trick Stars? Um, obviously, Trick Stars don't use fusion, so obviously playing around with the wording a little bit, you don't have to be, uh, let's say it doesn't require a Trick Star fusion monster. Maybe let's say uh, if you control a Trick Star link monster, this card becomes live, right? And then you maybe play a Trick Star build that kind of promotes just being able to put a link two on the board every time, like pretty easy, and then you can just set that card um, like that. Not only that, but Trick Star is an archetype. Like, I looked at like Subterries because that's another archetype that can search any card with its name so change a mergeroid also to like trick star call it's just called trick star call whatever um so it's searchable by candina uh candina is obviously searchable by your i guess technically two copies of light stage with terraforming at one um so it is fairly uh like pretty accessible and then as long as you like already have like a corabane or something you get two monsters on the field um you make the, the holly angel and then you can get this card um and then just combining hands where you have like reincarnation with this um really really can hurt can kill your opponent not just hurt but kill your opponent um and just in any deck like i thought about sub terrors but sub already have fiendus which is like an omni of the gate so it just feels like overkill it doesn't make sense in that archetype so i thought trick stars felt a little better because they don't actually have cards like reincarnation is the only card that disrupts your opponent and while it does disrupt them and it can be very very powerful um it doesn't actually like negate or remove or actually make your opponent minus unless you have the draw reincarnation combination um and other than that like it doesn't actually disrupt disrupt uh, and force your opponent into minus situations um so I thought this card would be like kind of spicy in this deck. Like, now, obviously we talked about how good it is, but actually giving this deck a searchable way to just straight up disrupt your opponent, an actual straight up disruption, would be really really solid and um, just add another layer to what Trick Stars can do. Um, also, that get getting a back a card from hand, you literally could link can a Candina off for your link two if that is the case, and then banish it to add Candina back, and you have a guaranteed follow up play for next turn. Boom. Bing, bang, boom, you're going to plus way more again next turn and just apply so much pressure. Um, and I just think with all the, with like in an archetype like this, it'd be consistently searchable. You could only play one copy if you wanted to because you have multiple ways to like get to Candina and stuff. So um, she can just search it out generically and then, you know, you don't need to clog on it if you can't get that uh, to that link too. But if you do, you might as well search it out and set up that insane disruption. Um, so I just wanted to bring this note i think that's pretty much all i really want to talk about this is a definitely a rough draft version of what this series could be um definitely let me know if you have any suggestions on future cards that are in archetypes that are really bad but the card is are really good and um let me know on this series if like i know this is a super basic one super quick super easy let me know if you think there are some things i'm missing and i could do to kind of change up and make this series a little bit better i'm always open to suggestions and um just have a good ass day guys if you subscribe, you haven't, and uh, please uh, just just have a great-ass day. God damn it. God damn it. I love you. Peace.